Hook it and cook it. From the catch to the kitchen, it's your front row seat to learn mouthwatering new ways to fix seafood. It's time for Hook It and Cook It. Welcome to Hook It and Cook It. I'm your host, Frank Willem. Today, we're cooking seared wahoo over wild rice pilaf with a saffron cream. Hmm. Chef Adrian Halpas from Mignon's at the Palace Casino is getting things ready to cook. But before we cook it, <laughs> we gotta go hook it. Wahoo, what a great fish. There's three things you need to know about that fish. One is they're really fast. Two is they're great to eat. And three, they have very, very sharp teeth. We've bandaged up more than one angler aboard my sport fish boat Vixen when a part of their body encountered the business end and the sharp teeth of a wahoo. And with regard to speed, they're one of the fastest fish in the ocean, reaching speeds of up to 60 miles an hour, putting them second only to the sailfish at 70 miles an hour. Though their colors fade rapidly with death, especially when they're first removed from the water, they're truly a beautiful fish. Their elongated body features an iridescent blue back with silvery sides that are marked with random patterns of vertical blue bars. My personal best is 72 pounds. We caught a pair that day when I landed mine, with the first one being about 45 pounds. But when we fished my boat in the Turks and Caicos, the charter boat in the slip next to us held the island record at 144 pounds. That's twice the size of mine. And they reached size up to 183 pounds. That's a big fish. Some anglers regard wahoo as one of the best fish to eat. I know I sure like them. Generally, we cut them in steaks and then grill them. But today, we're gonna learn a little different approach to preparing this great fish. All right, we've got our wahoo, and later we'll learn how to sear it perfectly. But when we come back, we're gonna get started on a wild rice pilaf. And then we're gonna add our rice. And this is one of my favorite, favorite rice. It's just super healthy, super good. Um, get all that in there, give it a good stir. Okay. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. Chef Adrian Halpas is going to show us how to sear a wahoo. But first, we've got some wild rice pilaf to get to. Well, I have to say there's a lot of fish that I enjoy, but honestly, I can't tell that much difference. But wahoo is one of my favorite, not just to catch, but to eat. And I understand that's what we're gonna cook today. What do we need to do to get started, Adrian? Well, Frank, we're gonna do a, a dish with, the, with your wahoo. Uh, we're gonna start off with the wild rice pilaf, and that's what mm -hmm. we're gonna start with now. Uh, it's going to take a little while to cook, but, but through the magic of TV, we're going to uh, shorten that. But we're going to get started off with uh, uh, one rail bed pepper, uh, one just regular yellow onion, and about right about two, two cups of this beautiful uh, uh, wild rice. And what we're going to do first is uh, we're going to get this pot heating up. Okay. And uh, we're just going to julienne some red pepper. Uh, All righty. Now you picked this rice yourself, is that what no, you're telling me? No, uh, it's not a common thing from down here, but um, as I'm just gonna take these ribs out real quick, all these red peppers. But it's a wonderful, wonderful whole grain rice. It's super healthy. In fact, this dish we're gonna make today is uh, uh, super, super, super healthy. So if you're on a special diet or you're, you're just watching your calories, uh, today's dish is, is just gonna be right up your alley, Same, I think. Huh? Yeah. Now taking the ribs out, is that just for appearance or is there a flavor? No, th th sometimes those ribs can just, uh, um, just, get a, just get a little, they just don't taste right and, and the appearance isn't right. And uh, there's just a lot of things I like to take them out for. Um, they can get a little, uh, a little funny in there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, we're just gonna do this real quick, and I'm gonna have you saute these up. Now, what about like red versus green peppers? I mean, is there much of a flavor difference, or is it just uh, for color issue, or what? Yeah, you're gonna find a, a little more heat on the red. They're, they're the same exact pepper. Uh, it's just that the red ones are are just ripened a little bit more. Oh, okay. Yeah, all that's right. all. And all it really is. Um, if you can't, Frank, I'm gonna just get this going for you. Okay. Just maybe put a little bit of about a quarter cup of. Uh, of olive oil in there. And we'll just pop those in. Get a little spatula there on you. Yeah. All right. I see a little, uh, little stirring stick. All right. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a, a little bit of kosher salt. Okay. Uh, and I'll finish 
the seven. So how do you catch wahoo? Well, we usually catch them. Uh, we don't normally we don't target them. We'll catch them when we're, we're fishing for billfish, tuna, and uh, mai mai. So is but, it kind of like a bycatch then? Or? Yeah, well, it's one of the species we do catch, but uh, sometimes we target them. But usually uh, we, we catch them trolling, and a lot of times we'll put down a trolling lead and get the bait a little bit deeper for wahoo. Very fast fish. In fact, uh, they're uh, almost as fast as sailfish. Wow. So it uh, puts up a good fight when you bring it in. It puts up a good fight, and uh, the other half is you got to watch the business end. It's like a king mackerel. The, the teeth are very sharp. Oh, wow. Oh, I love to go sometimes. Well, we'll have to arrange that. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll see how good you do tonight. Oh, okay. If you, if you make the grade, then. All right, then okay. we're just going to finish softening those up. All right. Uh, I'm a very good stirrer, you know this. Oh, you're doing an excellent job. I'm just going to give it a little more salt, a little more kosher salt. And then uh, once those are softened up, um, we're just going to add about about five cups or a good quart of uh, just uh, low sodium chicken broth. And we're going to bring that up to a boil. And that will become the stock for the for the rice? Yeah, Okay. exactly. And then we're going to add our rice. And this is one of my favorite favorite rice. It's just super healthy, super good. Um, get all that in there and give it a good stir. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's looking really good. All right. And that's about what it's going to look like. It's going to have some chicken stock over the top, and it's going to have all onions, and everything's going to be all just uh, incorporated real, real nice. Oop, turn off our heat, and now all you do is give it a good cover. And probably about 45 minutes to an hour and a half. Um, you might want to check it, stir it, and, uh, oop, not that one, this one. Okay. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to puff up, and that's, that's the real key. Wait for it to puff up. You're almost going to see like a real, real, like a puffed rice. And that's when it's done. A lot of people take it out too early and it's still real, real tough. Chewy, yeah. yeah I've had it, it like kinda, that. Yeah, so you gotta wait. Yeah. Sometimes it takes a long time. And that's our first step. Okay. When we return, Chef Adrian has tips on how to sear the perfect fish steak. And there we go. Get a nice little oh, yeah. crust on there. Welcome back to Hook It and Cook It. Later, we'll have an expert's take on wine pairing with Wahoo. But first, Chef Adrian has some searing to do. So what do we do to get started uh, with the fish part? Uh, we actually got some real nice wahoo. Um, and we're just going to quick take a couple nice of these little uh, these little steak medallions. Uh, I think two is a pretty good portion. That's going to be about six to, eight, six to eight ounces each. We're going to get our pan uh, all nice and smoking hot. We have a new thing. Uh, it's new to me. I'm sure it's been around for a while. It's uh, this avocado oil. Mm -hmm. It's a great uh, searing oil. It's a great, um, it's got a high smoke point and everything. Okay. Very, it's, you know, depending on which book you read, it's, it's the new healthy oil. Uh, you know, it changes every two it's days. It's grapeseed you know. oil for a while. Yeah, yeah. It, it goes, and canola oil's bad, canola oil's good, and so <laughs> olive oil, you know. Uh, but right now, this is, it, I use this at home a lot, this avocado oil. Uh, it's just, it just works. It's got a really good smoke point. It's just a good oil to have. Okay. And, um, here uh -huh. we're gonna just quick give, give this a little salt and pepper seasoning. Um, get that pan nice and hot. Not sure if it's, yeah, I think she's getting hot now. Um, oh yeah, get that nice little okay. sizzle there. Right. Now, um, do you know, we're just going to sear it. Is that just going to sear it, and we're going to flip it? So you're searing it, kind of get the color and, and and the crust, and then cooking in the oven so that you don't get it overcooked. Is that yeah, the, yeah? Okay, we're just we're just going to. Um, so, well, in the oven, it's going to cook from all sides. Mm -hmm. You're going to get the top, bottom, and you know, it's, it's going to cook from all sides. Um, and there we go. Get a nice little oh, yeah. crust on there. We'll pop it in the oven, excuse me, Frank. You just sear it on one side. Yeah, okay. sear, and it's going to finish searing on the other side. Oh, there. It, won't, it won't okay. take very long. We're going to start getting our sauce going. Uh, this is what's going to take a, a, little bit of, a little bit of time, uh, but while our we're going to probably add maybe a half a cup of wine here. I know, I know it seems like a lot, but uh, we're going to reduce this down. We're going to add a little bit of uh, minced shallot. Okay. Um, get this going as high as we can. 
Uh, and we're just gonna probably reduce that by you know, about, about, about two thirds. Uh, Any particular type of white wine or something that's uh, not sweet or what? This, this is a Chardonnay. Chardonnay, but, okay. You know, it, it's, it's one of those things, whatever you got right here, you know, when you're cooking at home, if you, yeah, just, all right, yeah. <laughs> one of those things, I mean. I, okay. That, that, that's how I do it, in fact. <laughs> that's, I think that's how I do it, too. It's, uh, mm. it's, it's, it's just enjoyable experience being at home. You got a little glass of wine, and, and you're cooking, and you're conversing. And uh, it's, it's, it's one of the reasons I fell in love with the, with the industry. Um, that, and I, I just love food. <laughs> it, it's funny because uh, uh, I, I never knew. I, I, I was born in Wisconsin. Of, of all places is freezing up there and, and I moved down here I knew a couple people down here I was like this is this is awesome I'm I'm <laughs> I'm coming down and they didn't believe me and here I am you know like 14 years later and I'm still here it's, it's just a great place to live I this coast all the way from New Orleans to the Pensacola it's just it's 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 my home so you've it got really the is. heat and humidity but you don't have to shovel snow right? oh I, or <laughs> it chip the ice off your windshield oh it's horrible it's horrible but uh, we're just going to add a little bit of heavy cream. That seems to be reducing real, real nice. Okay. Um, just a 30%, uh, 36% milk fat. Uh, we're going to probably add uh, maybe a half a cup again. Okay. Um, and then we're just going to let that reduce. We're going to add our little, our little saffron. Uh, this is one of those, it's probably the most expensive item in the world by weight. <laughs> uh, it's, it is very, very, very expensive. Uh, huh. But one good thing about it is that you don't need a lot. Like I'm basically going to take just like just a little pinch, and that's all you really, really need. Just a few threads mm -hmm. to get that color going, and get that little, little, real, real, real mild flavor. Um, so it's a little for flavor, mostly for color. Yeah, yeah. And it's okay. one of those spices like you eat with your eyes because it's gonna, it's gonna give this real, real nice uh, bright yellow color. Oh, okay. And it just makes the, the presentation real pretty. Um, oh yeah, I see. You can it. already see it. The heat kind of once it takes effect of the heat, it's just going to really do, really That's amazing, do well. Yeah. Uh, and again, it's, it's just a super healthy dish. Um, we did, we did, you know, uh, a lot of people are coming to the restaurant today are, are are looking for that. They're looking for more, you know, healthy options. Mm -hmm. and, and this is definitely, definitely, definitely a, a healthy option. Um, so when when am I going to get to go out fishing with you, Frank? <laughs> well, we'll have to, like I said, we'll see how this dish goes. Oh, if it's okay. as good as I think it is, then we'll have yeah. to go out and catch some more so you can do it again. How about that? Yeah. And uh, we're going to check our fish here. Okay. I think Ooh, we're about nice. done. So with the tuna, you yeah. probably just leave it seared, right? Yeah, this is this is looking looking really, really nice. Um, so I'm just going to take that out of the pan so it doesn't continue to cook. That's what I mean by this. Sometimes uh, good food takes time, and, and you know when you mm -hmm. when you're doing sauces like this, uh, it just takes time. And I think we're about ready. Okay. So I'm just going to take it quick off the heat. I'm All put right. it right here on the grill. And I'm just going to add like maybe two little pads of butter, um, and then just kind of just swirl it in. And that butter is just going to melt. And you guys see a nice. It's going to get a nice glaze. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can see it looks creamier already. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, do that so maybe we don't get as much noise. Um, oh yeah, that looks great. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a great sauce. Uh, you guys are gonna. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get to go fishing, so I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I, I'm confident. I I'm suspect confident. you're right. <laughs> <laughs> when we come back, Wahoo and wine sounds mighty fine. I think it's a beautiful pairing. It is. It brings it brings the flavor of the fish out and and, and the wine as well. You, you did a good job. Welcome back to Hook and Cook It. Well, we made our seared wahoo, and now it's time to eat and drink. Well, the wahoo looks great, I guess. So we got pretty much everything else done. Are we ready to start plating it? Yeah, we're ready to plate. I'm just uh, go get the plate for me, and uh, I'll just finish this little salad. You're ready? Uh, this is just some uh, julienne carrots, sliced radish, and uh, some julienne uh, cucumber. Okay. And all we're gonna do is just a little bit of this all, uh, avocado oil, and then just a little salt and pepper and just a touch of uh, white wine vinegar, just to give it a little zing. And huh. then we're just gonna give that a little toss. And oh, that looks good. Be, oh yeah, it's gonna just, just add that little bit of a little top on uh, with the sauce and the fish. Okay. Uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna have to strain this sauce, so 
I got my saffron threads in there and my shallots. So I'm just gonna quick give that a little, uh, a little strain through straining. Okay. Then the next step will be our wild rice pilaf. Top it off with this lovely salad. Oh man! Yeah, it's a it's a very healthy, very delicious. Uh, enjoy. All right. So we have the sauce here, the wild rice, and then the cucumber salad here. So, you know, what 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 are the the, the main focal points of the flavors that you expect? Uh, you're you're gonna get uh, like a, a very earthiness with the with the wild rice. And that the saffron, everything is real, real, real mild tasting, including the fish. So you don't want like a lot of blackening season in this kind of fish, in my opinion. It's it's just gonna uh, uh, so when you pair stuff like with this, it's gonna be you know mild and earthy, and then you're gonna get a little bit of zing with that uh, uh, with the acidity in the in uh, the, the vinegar and the cucumbers. And I guess you mainly let the fish speak for itself. Is that what yeah, you say? Yeah, yeah. You put yeah. the fish on display, and you just find little little things that uh, accompany it really well. Mm. It's got that little crust on there, and the fish is really mild. And the, you know the whole the uh, the whole dish is bring comes together with that sauce and the wild rice. You're right; you can taste that earthiness. There's uh, it's one thing I can say: Wahoo! <laughs> and I think you're going fishing. Awesome! Awesome! <laughs> awesome! Lad. It's excellent. It, it, this is a masterpiece. You did, you did good. I I've had Wahoo prepared a lot of different ways. This beats them all, hands down. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. As good as this Wahoo dish is, there's one thing that make it better, and that's a wine pairing. And we're fortunate enough to have Jonathan Masano here to kind of guide us through what would be the proper wine for this and tell us a little bit about it. So Jonathan, what do you have for us here? Hi right, Frank, with this nice Wahoo dish, I've got a little Pine Ridge Chenin Blanc Viognier. And the reason I chose this wine, it's got great natural acidity. Also a nice floral component from the Chenin Blanc and some nice weight from the Viognier. And I think that's gonna pair up really nice with what Chef Adrian has put together for us. Mm. You wanna take a little taste here? Yeah, and we'll kinda give it a try here. So right on the nose, you get really nice floral, some apple, peach pear. Mm, yeah, that's very nice. That's right. Very nice, yeah, I like that. So a little sweetness, not overpowering. Um, very light, yeah. Nice, refreshing. You know, here on the Gulf Coast, it's summer about 10 months out of the year, and we have a lot of fresh fish. So you want wines that really have nice acidity, a little sweetness, really pair up with what you've got here. So this dish is nice and light. Uh, I know he's got some, some radish on there. It's gonna add a touch of spice, so that's why I chose this with the sweetness mm -hmm. from, the, from the Chenin Blanc. Also a little earthiness in the rice uh, with that weight from the Viognier in here. So looking forward to trying to bite and why don't taste we do that in this? Oh, I, I want to take some more of that wine. Okay. So the whole key, you know, to wine pairing with food is to have some fun with it and just try and get the flavor components. Mm. I just love that Wahoo. Mm. That is excellent. That is very nice. So you know, this fish has got medium body to it. It's got that nice crispy texture on the outside. Um, and just that nice natural acidity with that white wine vinegar he's got in the sauce here. Um, I think it's a beautiful pairing. Great. Well, there's someone local here where I want to get this wine. Do you happen to know any place where they might be able to find it? We've got a few wines on the shelves. We've got over 1,300 selections at Maisano's <laughs> Fine Wine Spirits here in Ocean Springs. Wow, well, I'll, I'll go by there and pick up a bottle for sure. Great, well, glad you're enjoying the pairing. Thanks for having me. Well, you learned how to make seared wahoo and pair it with the perfect wine. I'd like to thank Chef Adrian Halpas from Mignon's at the Palace Casino for showing us how to do it. And I'd also like to thank Jonathan Masano from Masano's Fine Wines and Spirits in Ocean Springs, Mississippi for showing us how to pair the perfect wine. And remember, you can find the recipe on our Facebook page, our webpage. Join us next time for another delicious episode of Hook It and Cook It.